Thank you very much. Um, before I introduce our next speaker, I'd just like to tell everyone that our hashtag, I want to be free, is trending at number two on Twitter. So, well done. <laughs> the Zionist money has helped. But <laughs> right, so our next speaker is Dave Silverman, who's the president of American Atheists. It's a non-profit organization uh, that supports the rights of atheists and the removal of expressions of religion in public in accordance with the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. Um, Dave is also the author of Fighting God, an atheist manifesto for a religious world. It's been described as a provocative, unapologetic book that takes religion to task that will give inspiration to a lot of non-believers. So without further ado, I'll present to you Dave. Thank you so much. So how am I changing slides? How am I changing slides? Ah, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Hi. I'm uh, really, really thrilled to be here today. Um, I uh, thank Mariam for bringing me in. Uh, there are very few people, Mariam, who could call me up and say, Dave, please come, and I just make sure it happens. And you're one of the very, very few people for whom I do that um, because I love heroes like you. And I define a hero as a person who uh, sacrifices or risks themselves in order to uh, benefit others. And I'm really, really humbled to be here today because I'm in a room full of heroes like that. So I want to thank you all for coming. And, and I appreciate your attention today. And I appreciate your activism. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how religion in America is working and how we're, we're working with Islam in America. Um, for, I, I have this picture up here on the right. Now, this is a picture from my book. And as you can see, it's a smiley face. And it's labeled, not the Prophet Muhammad. And the reason that it's labeled, not the Prophet Muhammad, is that that is the only way I could get my book published. <laughs> and so what this is, I actually had to do that. This, this was a fight that I had with my publisher. And without that knot, they weren't going to publish it because they were literally afraid of terrorism. They were literally afraid of jihad. They were literally afraid that a smiley face would cause harm and cause death. And so having that in mind, people talk about Islamism and Islamophobia, and I kind of call this Islamismophobia, the fear of Islamism, the fear of jihadism, as Gina was talking about before. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we're fighting in America, fighting the far right and the far left. And a lot of this stuff was stuff that we already talked about, how the right and the left are kind of working counterintuitively, and especially the left. Uh, the why behind our actions and why both extremes are wrong. And finally, I'll go into what we do and how we do it by ignoring both and doing good. And that is, of course, why we're here, to do good. We're here to benefit the population. We're here to benefit the world. Um, and that's what we're trying to get done. So let me show you a chart that was uh, furnished to me by a friend of mine, a very important friend of mine. This is not scientific. It's just illustrative. But I want to show you this. I wish I had a hand microphone. Can I get this one on? Can I get this one on? Boom, boom, boom. Thank you. So we've got a red right and we've got a blue left. And what you can see in this chart, which again is non-scientific, it's just illustrative, it shows you what we're looking at in America. We're looking at the right that doesn't really care about rape culture, that doesn't really care about homophobia, doesn't really care about sexism, unless it's within Muslim culture. And then they really care about it a lot. And then, on the other side, we've got a left. <laughs> we've got a left that cares a lot about rape culture, even more about homophobia, even more about sexism, unless it's Muslim. In which case, it's all good. So, the dynamic that we have in America is that the, the right wing in America is not just conservative, it is Christian by nature. It is a Christian right. And it is theocratic in nature, theocratic for the Christians. Um, and it creates an outgroup in Muslims, as well as atheists and Jews. So attacking anything Islamic is good for the right, 
but for the wrong reasons. It's ignorance-based, it is Islamophobic. If it is, if it's Muslim, it's bad to the right because, of course, it's anti-Christian to the right. On the other side, the left is apologetic for the Christian right. The left looks at the right and says they're Islamophobic and we're not like that. So we're going to be apologetic. And because um, the American culture, and I only want to speak about the American culture right now, because the American culture is very, very based on the internet, because a lot of people, uh, I'm going to piss off a few people here, um, a lot of people get their news not just from fake news sources, but from internet memes. It's a very, very unsophisticated culture. And so they conflate Islamophobia and actual criticism of religion, and that's why they rebel against criticism of Islam. They rebel against it. This is why Richard was pushed out of Berkeley. And this is why he said, come on, show me the abusive speech, and he didn't get a response. And he won't get a response. He won't get a response because he's being treated like an Islamophobe because the people who are treating him that way don't know the difference between Islamophobia and actual criticism of the, Islamic, of the Muslim religion. So the left is apologetic for the Christian right and resists criticizing Islam to counter the right. They feel guilty for the right being Islamophobic, so they're apologetic. And at the same time, what they're doing is they're just kind of abandoning compassion and the issues for which they otherwise campaign. Now let's look at the wrong right. The wrong right, the wrong right, again, is Christian-based. It is um, a Christian political movement, and that means that uh, criticizing Islam is actually good because Islam is the enemy of Christianity. That's what they think. They don't look at Judaism as the enemy of Christianity, and indeed, they don't even see atheism so much as the enemy of Christianity because they don't see us as significant. They see Islam... As the, as the enemy of Christianity, and so they fight against anything that has anything to do with Islam. Uh, the, most, uh, the, most, the best example that I can think of is the famous World Trade Center mosque, which was located two blocks away from the World Trade Center on private property. It was a completely legal entity. It wasn't, there was like nothing wrong with it at all, but they hate it because it's Muslim. That's the only reason. And so they find reasons to hate it. Uh, Islam and only Islam, according to the right, creates terrorists. Of course, we know that terrorists can be created anywhere, but Islam is the big bad guy to the Christian right. And drawing Muhammad, I love drawing Muhammad. Most of you know that. I draw Muhammad all the time. Drawing Muhammad is dangerous because the Muslims will riot and kill people. And if you draw Muhammad, and, Muh- and Muslims riot and kill people, it's your fault. It's your fault. And so there's this atmosphere of fear, this atmosphere of jihadophobia, Islamismophobia, that is paralyzing the Christian right and is making them very, very angry and very, very scared. The thing about the Christian right is that they are, for the most part, theocratic, for the most part, ignorant, for the most part, scared, and for the most part, armed. And that's a scary thing. And that's a scary thing. Now, the adher- according to the right, the adherents of Islam want to be adherents of Islam, and any Muslim could be a terrorist. Of course, we know that's not true. And secular law should bend for Christian religious privilege, but not Islamic religious privilege, because Islam is anti-American. So they have this idea that America is a Christian nation. They have this concept that they get special rights and everybody else does not. So the idea that uh, we, we were talking about the RFRA earlier, um, where Alan Dershowitz was is campaigning using the RFRA, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, for female genital mutilation, and the Christian right is all against that, but they do like those, those laws to be bent for them. They like that a lot. And so the Christian right, armed, scared, demonizes Islam, And of course, again, in in, in America, the idea of jihad in our backyard is not like the rest of the world yet. We don't have uh, so much of a problem with honor killings or uh, the, the real problems, the other problems that so many other people in this room deal with all the time. I'm talking to you from a place of privilege, and I know that. So we're looking at the Christian right that is scared 
and reactionary and ignorant and armed. And they look bad and they sound bad because they are Islamophobic to a very large degree. Ignorance-based fear. The left rebels against that. The left looks at the right and, se and sees the ignorance, but doesn't do the research. So the left is wrong too. The left looks at criticizing religion as racism. This is where you get Islam, this is why you've got people on TV saying Islamophobia is racism, and that if you criticize Islam, you're a racist. That's because they don't know what race is. That's because they don't have a nuanced view. That's because a lot of the people get their news from internet memes or the titles of stories. They don't go into it, and they conflate Islamophobia with actual criticism of Islam. The left says criticizing Islam creates terrorists. The right says Islam creates terrorists. The left says criticizing Islam creates terrorists. So we have this dichotomy where we, you know, people don't quite understand what to do. Nobody has the right idea. Drawing Muhammad is hate speech. And people have the right not to be offended. This is a very important point. There's a large piece of the American culture that's growing that says people have the right not to be offended. That somebody's right to not be offended trumps freedom of speech. I hate to use that word. Ugh, I should not use that T word anymore. That, that freedom of uh, not to be offended beats um, the, uh, the constitutional right of expression. Again, this goes back to where Richard was pushed off. He was, he was refused his right to speak, and the people who wanted to hear him were refused the right to listen because some people would be offended. All adherents of Islam want to be adherents of Islam, and they have the right to live that way. Of course, again, we know that's not true, and we've been talking about that all day, about how women and children of Muslims don't necessarily have that choice. A lot of people don't have that choice, and there are a lot of men in this room who didn't have that choice. Uh, growing up, and um, you know, it, it's, it's fundamentally wrong where the left is. And secular law should bend for religious privilege, especially Islam, because the right is so bigoted. So this is the thing. We've got lefts, like Alan Dershowitz, defending female genital mutilation in the name of religion out of guilt about the religious right. Out of guilt. And so these compassionate liberals that we love so much are just abandoning that because they want to perform, they want to be better for Muslims. They want to apologize for the right. And they do. And so they criticize those of us who are rightfully criticizing Islam, rightfully criticizing the idea of female genital mutilation, uh, and they're condemning us as racists. They're condemning us as, as Islamophobes. So let's look at um, our equality message. Now, in America, we have freedom of religion legally, and that means that all religions have to be treated equally. And this is the biggest, the worst part for Christians, for the Christian right. The thing that they don't want more than anything else is to lose those special rights, lose that privilege. And so what we have been doing at American Atheists is equating all religions. We have been equating them over and over and over again. We don't talk about so much about Islam and Christianity. We talk about your God versus your God versus your God. We talk about the God that agrees with you. You believe in a God that wants you to break the law. You believe in a God that wants you to cut your children. You believe in a God that wants you to do this. We do that, and that equates the religions. And what we have seen is that, well, this is exactly back to you again, that Jews and, and Muslims and atheists are actually teaming up against the Christian right. And it creates a very, very weird set of bedfellows. The Muslims are depending on us to defend their rights. We are the big bad guys. The, the atheists are the big bad guys. The Jews and the Muslims are working together. The Jews and the atheists and the Muslims are kind of backdooring it. We fight religion, including Islam, because we're good people. This is why we're doing the fight. And, all, and so we know that all believers of all religions are victims of that religion. We don't treat Islam as a monolith. We don't treat Christianity or Judaism as a monolith. We treat religion as an individual thing. And we understand that, men and that, that a lot of people do not have choices. 
this is yet another my God can beat up your God conflict. And that's a very good line that I use often. It's just another religious war. Atheists and everybody else are in the crossfire between these two forces. And this fear of jihadism, this, this Islamismophobia, feeds into this. It, it feeds into this whole concept that we are having a religious war in, on American soil. We push very strongly that all religion is individual and cafeteria. Every person believes in a God that agrees with them. Every believer is a victim of religion. Every believer invents their own God. Every believer invents their own God. So that's why every believer agrees with their God. There's not a single believer, aside from the mentally ill, who disagrees with their God on morality terms. Nobody says, well, I believe that gay people should be married, but God disagrees. Nobody says that. Everybody believes in a God that agrees with them. And when you put things into this perspective, when you put things into this term, you see religion to be reduced. You see religion losing its strength, its relevance. And you see that religion is just another term for personal opinion. I was talking to um, Martin and Anne earlier today. We were talking about how religion, just defining it differently, calling religion uh, different from thought, elevates it. And that's what it's doing. So when we bring religion down to the fact that it's all just personal thought, it's your opinion versus your opinion versus your opinion, and the fact that you believe in a God that agrees with you doesn't make a difference, we reduce it down to freedom of thought rather than freedom of religion so that everything is equal. We must treat all religion... Go ahead. <laughs> we must therefore treat all religion equally, guaranteeing the same rights for all, protect our own rights, and grant, and grant no solace to any religion. There was, uh, going back to the RFRA, I am a very strong proponent, and, and this is the logical conclusion. If all religion is individual, if all religion is individual, then there should be no religious exemptions to any laws anywhere, ever. If you've got even the most simple idea, even the most simple idea of a, uh, a Jew wanting to wear his yarmulke, even though it's not up to code. So we're going to let this guy wear a hat and another guy can't wear a hat, same, same everything else. The only reason that he gets to wear a hat is because he thinks his God wants him to. And that's the reason he gets to break the law. That's not a good enough reason. There should be absolutely zero religious exemptions to any civil law anywhere. And that is the message that we push. So fighting Allah, and I'm going through this pretty quickly, but I wanted to j just get into this. Fighting Allah ethically and strongly. We got, we put this up. Now, I want to make a, a point here. When you've got Islamism-ophobia, and what I guess the, you would call the left Islamophobia ophobia. Okay. So we got Islamismophobia, which means we're fearing Muslim, we're fearing all Muslims, or we're fearing all Muslims because they could uh, create a jihad. And we are fearing being called Islamophobic, like the left is. You create a space. You create a space for Islam to fester and grow and for Islamism to grow because nobody's criticizing it. You create a safe space for jihadism. That is the space where American Atheist lives. We live there. We poke holes there because we need to make sure that that space stays empty. It's not a big problem in America yet. And we intend to keep it that way. So we put up billboards like this one, and this is not in some podunk town. This is in Elizabeth, New Jersey. It's in a major Muslim neighborhood, right? Uh, one of the largest Muslim neighborhoods in, New in the country. It says, you know it's a myth and you have a choice in Arabic. And I went, we went there, we put that up there to tell the world, to tell the country that we can do that. That's the only reason we did it, to show that we can do it, to show that we won't trigger a jihad if we push that up. We put that up to show that it's nothing, that nothing's going to happen. And so I went to the, we put this billboard, it's at the top of a big building. I cropped the picture so you can't tell. 
uh, I put it on top of a build, big building, and CNN brought me there, and we walked up and down the street talking to all the Muslims in the street. Now, the Muslims in America, by and large, don't want to be lumped in with what we call Islamists. I know there's some, di some discussion about what an Islamist is, but I think we know what I'm talking about. They don't want to be lumped in. So the Muslims that we met on the street below this sign were all about, oh, it's freedom of religion, it's freedom of expression, I don't care. So they're going way out of their way to distance themselves, while at the same time we're showing the rest of the country that poking at Islam is a good idea. We use Islam to force religious equality. We scare religious right by threatening tre equal treatment for atheists and Muslims. So we pick on Christianity a lot in America, at American atheists. And a lot of times people will come to us and say, well, we're, we're too afraid. To, to pick on those Muslims. Because, again, Islam is a phobia. They think we're afraid too. So we can show them how we're doing this, and we're showing them that actually their fears are unfounded. At the same time, we are equating Islam and Christianity, which is something Christianity hates so much, because that means that the Christians only have the same amount of rights as the Muslims. And they hate that so much. They hate that so much. We openly criticize Islam to pierce the veil and demonstrate that there is no backlash. We openly do it to show there is no backlash. And the Muslim population, by and large, in America, allows us to. By and large, they go right along with it because they don't want to be lumped in with the Islamists that we see on television. Muslim children have the same rights as Christian and atheist children, including freedom of religion. This is a nice message that we, should, that we should use more often. Muslim children have the same rights as Christian and atheist children, including freedom of religion. And then we go back to female genital mutilation and all of the other ways that we uh, are allowing religious folks in, this, in America to mistreat their children. And finally, right on time, we draw Muhammad. I draw Muhammad. We don't do it to make people angry. We do it because we're angry that we're not supposed to do it anymore. We do it because all of a sudden we're losing rights. And we're losing rights and when you lose a right and when you give up a right, you don't get it back. And you're not only losing it for yourself, you're losing it for your children and your children's children because it doesn't come back. So that's the space that American Atheist is occupying, this safe space that nobody else is talking about. We're going in and criticizing Islam and hitting Islam and drawing Muhammad because we want to, to protect our rights to keep that space from being filled with jihadism. And that's why, that's that face from the book. I put the XXX over Muhammad. Uh, there's the video camera. So I'd like to make it clear to the people on the camera that I do depict this as the Prophet Muhammad of Islam. And I want you all to join me, to draw Muhammad as much as you can. <laughs> but again, it's not, about, it's not about being rude, it's not about pissing off Muslim people. It's about the fact that we have the right to draw what we want when we want it. And the fact that you believe in a God that says, I can't do that, doesn't have any effect on me. Because ladies and gentlemen, there are millions of religious laws in this world. And they all have one thing in common. They have no effect on you. They have no authority over you. You can do whatever you want. And that's why I draw Muhammad, and that's why I hope you will too. And that's why you know, I, I'm really glad to have been here to be able to, to speak to you. Um, I have my book, for, for, uh, I have a few copies of my book to give away. Um, I would just like to say that it's really an honor to be here today, and I want to thank you all for your attention. Thank you. <laughs>